Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to DreamHack Bucharest. Well, woo! A remote Bucharest cast, but of course, we're beyond the summit. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Merlini and K Pop Tosis, as always, man in the stats. And uh, we have just loaded into our first game. We'll hop into that in a second, but before we do, let's kind of set the stage here for DreamHack Bucharest. So we have four teams, invitational tournament, tournament, double elimination format, all matches best of three. And with that being said, oh, we can take a quick look at our brackets here. It was supposed to be Navi, Alliance, Cloud9. But, unfortunately, Navi didn't quite make the trip. And, of course, the last Pe team People are sick. Yeah. Three of them all fell, fell ill, fell prey to the, the post-land plague. I, I also fell prey to it. But they, they still went with Denny and Havo. So they've got three stand-ins playing. It's Arise, Zizu, and Come With Me. And uh, we'll see what they can do with their... <laughs> as God's put it, it it's literally Dendi plus four. Well, with that being said, uh, it's time for our first match. Cloud9 versus Fluffy Bears. Uh, best of three format, Ben. It's hard to say how this Fluffy Bears team is going to do. I have no idea. I've seen a Rise play. He is a very solid player. But the only problem is I haven't seen him play other roles besides mid. Yeah, I was going to say, he always goes mid. And mm -hmm. you've got so Dendi. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, and then we have Come With Me, who is a little inconsistent, but he's in a, been in the competitive scene for a really long time. And then Zizou, I think his, his name rings a bell, but I don't exactly remember him. He's I fuzzy. Yeah, I believe he teamed with them in the past. They're tagged up as TCN right now. So, well, with that being said, uh, predictions, Cloud9, I guess the one consideration for them Cloud is Eternal Nine. Envy just went to Star Ladder, then he flew all the way back to the US, stayed for like a day or two, and now he's back in Romania. So, he may be a little tired. Eh, whatever. Eh. It's better than having three sandins on your team. That's true. So, so yeah. we'll give him the edge for that. And you go, you actually, Eternal Envy had kind of a, a cheeky little tweet where he basically said that, you know, this is like the, the t you look at this tournament coming into Starlight, and this is like, wow, four premier teams, especially if Navi is their full roster. But now it's four teams that just didn't, haven't done that great lately. Two Cloud teams Nine didn't qualify. Cloud Nine didn't Starlight. qualify. Alliance performed rather They're poorly. Well, Alliance and Navi got fifth and sixth. Yeah. Out of eight. And there was, I mean, the teams below them were Rock's Kiss and MVP Phoenix. So, uh, not exactly what most people consider like the clear top teams heading in towards the International Four. So, they looked a little shaky. Who's your money on? This game? Definitely Call of Nine. Uh, oh, no, I mean, I mean just tournament? for the whole tournament. I like to say Cloud Nine, but Cloud Nine has had issues with Alliance and Navi in the past. Mm -hmm. So. I, I don't know where Cloud9 ranks in between Alliance and uh, Alliance and Navi seem about equal. Um, Navi traditionally been a little bit stronger in the past five months, but Alliance had a more impressive game versus DK and just seemed to be a little bit more consistent. And Cloud9, they've been relatively inconsistent. They like destroyed Alliance. No, they won against Alliance and Starlighter and they got crushed in the tiebreakers. So they're all over the place. Yep. Well, well, I don't know what to predict. If anything, I think Fanatics look pretty scary lately. That's they've, true. They've been playing a bit better. And with that being said... Uh, game one is well underway, so we're going to go ahead and hop ourselves inside the draft, and away we go. Best of three format, Z Fluffy Bears, Dendi Havost plus three, or Dendi plus four, however you want to call them, and Cloud9 on the dire side. So it's game one, BO3. Simultaneous to this game, there's another stream going on. There are two best of threes at once. The other match is Alliance versus Fnatic. Gods, as well as, I believe, Bulba are casting that. PPD was going to fill in because Bulba was going to dodge, but... I think Bulba did end up showing up in the end, so if you want to watch that game, Alliance versus Fnatic, head on over to twitch.tv slash beyond the summit too, but Five with that being said, it's the the Bears versus Cloud9, and Radiant well, away we go. Back. Ember Spirit, first overall pick by Cloud9. This is not 6.81. I know a lot of people are excited about the patch notes. It's only on the test version, not yet released, so uh, we'll have like a one last hurrah with kind of the old meta before things hopefully shift a bit. Yeah, the big five. Ten Four of them banned, one of them picked. Yeah, so it goes. It is how it goes. I wonder how. Well, the Quas Quas Wex Invoker or Quas Exort Invoker didn't really get touched, so I think he'll still be part mm, of the big Necro five. Necro got a very slight nerf, but mm -hmm. I still think he's really. It's strong. still it's still an amazing item, end of the day. And outside of that, I don't think there were too many direct changes. A lot of other heroes got stronger. Maybe that affects Invoker a bit in the end, but Yul's got buffed. Yeah, it's even better for Quas Exort. Anyways, Cloud Nine going with a EG esque at draft, I'd say. I'd, I'd probably say EG and Rock Kiss are the two teams that favor Tree the most, but EG really likes Ember plus Tree. Yeah, normally uh, normally for Rocks, they'll go for more of like your Slardar, your Lycan with the Tree. Uh, but with that being said, still a very strong draft. And what the Fluffy Bears, we don't really know how they're going to look to lane this, what their roles will be for this tournament. Obviously, they haven't practiced too much coming into it with the last-minute stand-in changes. 
Uh, maybe we see Dendi shift into a different role. Maybe Arise is forced into a different role, but uh, we'll just kind of see how the lanes shake out. For now, going Visage Puck early on. Drow gets the ban. Something that Cloud9 love to run themselves is that Drow with Visage. If they don't get the Visage, they don't run the Drow generally, and well, Fluffy Bears won't get their hands on the combo, but Visage on his own still a pretty strong support. Yeah, Fluffy Bears, Fluffy Bears. I assume Come With Me will be on support. I'm just not sure about Arise and Zuzu. Maybe Zuzu's in the offlane, and I have no idea where Arise is going to go. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess we can just look at the draft and not think too much about the hero player assignments, and then we'll see what they do for the first game. Cloud9, on the other hand, we generally know how they're going to look to play this, so it should be a Sing Sing. Ember going mid, most likely. You've got your support tramp protector. Uh, we don't really know what the lanes will be, though. Eternal Envy played a ton of Luna at Starladder. EG picking it for him almost every game, and he did a really good job on that here as a stand-in. Probably one of the most impressive stand-in performances that any player's had in recent tournament history. But, well, we'll see what they look to do here. The Luna's been banned out. Eternal Envy known for his very wide range of heroes, though. So, it's this is not something that's going to affect him too much. Apparently he, like, never really played Potom before Star Letter. Hopefully he'll... He was pretty pretty damn was, good on the Potom. He was pretty good on Potom, yeah. yeah. He played it well. Um, maybe Cloud9 should consider banning Doom, I think, versus yep. Fluffy Bears. Hmm. Team Doom's pretty good for Ember Spirit. I, I mean, Doom, Bat is normally, like, your two kind of ideal, not counters, but heroes to go against him. Just a lot of lockdown, good initiation. Puck's another option, which they do have already. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I'm looking at is there's still a Dazzle out there. And Cloud9 do need a second support. So I'm wondering if Fluffy Bears are either going to ban that or even look to take it for themselves. Oh, Dazzle, Tree, and Ember, that would be a pain in the butt to deal with if you're trying to kill him as a Puck that's, or anyone that's else. That's the Superman Ember. Yeah, that's rough. And then you just throw in a Magnus. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sing Sing Magnus not something we see very often, though. Yeah. He can play carry. Uh, I guess... That's true. Yeah, I don't know who's going to play Mag, though. I, I mean, I'd, I'd say probably Bone 7 would be the most likely candidate, but then that would force... Yeah. They're, they're, they're pretty flexible with their lane, so... It's kind of an X-factor for them. Claw 9 are on the dire side here, and, well, the Fluffy Bears will ban out the Nyx Assassin in the end, so... Mm, I guess it's just a good offlaner for Bone 7. It's decent against Puck and Visage. There's still other offlaners out there, though. Centaur, probably the big one. You've got your Clockwork to a lesser extent. And, well, the bears are going to go for a Darkseer. Darkseer's pretty cool. I think Fluffy Bears needs to go a rather aggressive strategy. I think if they try and play passively versus Cloud9, Cloud9 will win. Firstly, they're better at greed. Secondly, it's just what they're used to. And Fluffy Bears... I think the late game decision making as a team with stand-ins is pretty difficult. I think team like if you're going to play with a stand-in, you probably want to fight a lot early because that's usually what you, what you just do in pubs. What do you do with random people? And then just farming that's passive, really Cloud9 will almost certainly beat them at that. So they need to take it. They need to get early game heroes, get like early blink on puck, just get a lot of kills, pick aggressive supports, not passive farming ones. It looks like Cloud9 will pick up Doom for themselves. Yeah, the Eternal Envy Doom here matches up very well against Darkseer. Uh, mm -hmm. And to a lesser extent, I guess, against Puck. But, yeah, we've seen... this. Doom has been a, a thorn in the side of teams that run, like, these big team fight initiation combos. If, if Darkseer just gets doomed in the fight, sure, maybe he lives, but then you're fighting without your key team fight hero. You've got Puck there, but not much follow-up to it, so... And just kind of a comfort hero for Cloud9 as well. Something that's Eternal Envy has run quite a bit in the safe lane. Yeah, I, I'm surpri very surprised that Fluffy Bears didn't actually Five take it remaining. instead. I think Ward worked very well in them just instantly shutting down the Ember Spirit and then Tree and Protector can't really do anything to counter initiate that. And they'll go for a Viper here. So if I had to guess, I would probably say Dendi Puck mid, Havost Viper in the safe lane, and uh, maybe we just see our eyes rotate to the off lane as the Darkseer. Zizon come with me on the supports, but well, we'll see for sure how they want to lane. I would like to see them aggro try against Cloud9. Tree and Protector is not terribly great in a try lane. He is really good at zoning out a Darkster in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, though. And if you have Doom Free Farming, if you have Support Pooling, they will usually get a ton out of their try lane. And yeah, Viper is going to get some farm and stuff, but Doom just farms much, much faster. And Cloud9 is just really good at playing efficient, efficiently. And we saw that a couple times at Star Ladder where Darkseer just got completely zoned out. I think YYFs was one, and f I forget whose other Darkseer we saw, but they just got completely crushed in this almost exact same matchup. Safe Lane Farmer, so one of them was a Doom, with a Triant Protector plus one support, and Triant Protector alone just completely um, zoned out a Darkseer. He got like zero experience. If you go Surge at level one, you can't get level two. If you get Ion Shell, you can't really call him out to the wave. 
Well, the one thing there was also that YYF was very slow to rotate to the jungle. And mm. we saw some of the Dark Seers just got stubborn. Like, you get zoned out early, it kind of sucks, but you just go woods and catch up. You can come to the lane at, say, level level 2 to 4, long before they actually get Doom. And during that time, get some levels, at least try and slow down his farm. Uh, Doom does match up pretty well against Dark Seer. Just having Devour to eat an Einschild creep as well is quite annoying. And uh, can, in some cases, even go for a Midas. See, they can do this thing where, where we saw Rock's Kiss first relax. Where Viper can just play versus Centaur, Centaur gets returned, you go Corrosive, and you destroy him, and then you aggro try. I think that would do pretty well for Fluffy Bears, and it also makes it much easier to rotate to Ember mid and try and kill him, perhaps, when Living Armor's off cooldown. Yep. Centaur's the choice for Cloud9, so now we see Bone 7's here. It is a quad melee draft, and frankly, Darkseer does really well against mass melee lineups normally. The other hero that's a great... Normally a great pickup against mass melee, which we saw IG have used historically to great effect, is uh, Enigma. And they actually, they have Darkseer who maybe will need the jungle, but in theory they would have room for that pick. So we'll see how Fluffy Bears want to handle this, but running four melee heroes definitely has its downsides. There's a ton of things that are really good. You can run Slaughter, you can run Axe, Enigma's pretty good, but a lot of those would make their lanes a little bit funky. At least Axe and, axe and stuff. I like Axe, though. He's cool. He dunks on fools. Indeed he does. Sand King's the ban from Cloud9. Great jungling support, good AoE combo, and also good against this mass melee draft. Sand King would have been really good for them. Um, yeah, the thing is Cloud9 would not have really been able to contest him. Centaur's not going to do too much, like, running after a Sand King in the woods. Not going to kill him solo. And that, that could have worked out quite well. Instant stun for Ember Spirit. They need one more disable, I'd say. Like, Blink Puck Silence is just not enough. Yeah, the thing is he still keeps on running away from you, even if you coil him, and your team might not get there in time, so... Plus, there's living armor to worry about. Dazzle's still out there for Cloud9 as a potential secondary support, and... I actually think Dazzle's a little bit overrated. I think he's a very, very good support, but he shouldn't be, like, first pick every single game, no matter what lineup you do. Well, it's I mean, this, this is fifth pick, to be fair. Yeah, this so. is fifth pick. Yeah, he's, I, I think he's pretty good here. He's all, he's all right. They don't have that much like physical damage to synergize with his minus armor. God. There's Ember? no, there's no like huge. Oh, oh, for Cloud Nine. Oh, for Cloud Nine, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant for Fluffy Bears. Ah, yeah, for Fluffy Bears, it's like man. For Cloud Nine, I think it'd be really good. Yeah, they they should look to get a ranged hero though. At least one ranged hero. Uh, we'll see what it is. Venge is unusual though, but it does lend to early aggression. Venge is probably one of the most aggressive early heroes that you'll see in the game, and try and pick apart Cloud9's lanes. Their lanes are really weak. Ember's not that strong of a solo in mid. Tree and Protector is strong in 3-on-1 situations, but 3-on-3, he's not terribly strong. Doom doesn't really offer that much. He's tanky, but can't offer too much in terms of return kill. Centaur is okay, but he fares very, very poorly versus Viper. So they will pick up at least one range here, but there's not too many great spells to steal. This Darkseer could potentially have a field day. Him and actually Havos handling the puck, Denny on the Viper, so... Looks wow. like they may... Do they go aggressive trilane potentially here? Just I, run a safe lane solo puck? Or even... Well, what do they do with Darkseer then? Well, he can be in the trilane. We saw, I, we've seen teams so. go for the creep skipping. Normally it's like with a Triant Protector. Mm -hmm. You just keep it's on It's a little bit unusual without any defensive heroes. It's still pretty nice though. It, the problem is you just have to spend so much on region. You have to get like a flask plus two sets of tangos. Probably more if you want to tank creeps. But I guess if they have no range heroes besides Rubik... He can the, do whatever The he wants. main thing is they could get that Viper versus Centaur matchup, and we have, we saw it today. Viper just smashes yes. Centaur in lane, and then you run the Puck versus Ember mid. It's at least like a break-even matchup. So. Well, and these three players are the three stand-ins, so it's very likely that they will stand in together in the same lane. Whoa. <laughs> well, with that being said, guys, uh, it's time now for our Game 1 of a Best of 3. We'll be casting five matches today, leaving only the Grand Finals for Championship Sunday. So we get through the winner's bracket and almost all of the, and pretty much all of the loser's bracket as well. Cloud9, this is game one on the dire side. Bears on the Radiant and Dreamhack Bucharest now officially underway. We've got Eternal Envy on his signature Doom. Sing Sing handling the Ember Spirit, rushing the bottle. AUI 2000 on the Lumbering Tree and Protector. Pylai Die, your Rubik, headed to the safe lane. And that will leave Bone 7 finally reunited with his team. There's been so many land tournaments over the past year that... Hasn't been able to attend for Cloud9, even going back to like the Monster Invitational D2L before that, but they've got the full five here. Let's see how they do. He's on home soil too, and on the Radiant side, you've got the Bears. Zizu going to walk up the ramp as the Vengeful Spirit almost gets the stun off an Envy, just able to walk out of range. Now come with me on the Visage. Havo smoked up, playing that Viper. Arise on the Darks here, and that will leave Dendi. So Dendi, plus four, plus three. The aggressive Bears. This, this is... 
This is a really good laning choice by Fuzzy Bears, though. They they need to do this. They need to punish C9's very, very greedy lineup. You can only living armor like one person every 30 seconds ish, and he doesn't even have it yet. And I think they can take advantage of this early game, get off to a storming start, and just get a ton of kills. AOI 2000 is starting with some boots of speed here as the support tree and it looks like they'll run some dual lane. So Havos going to be up against the Centaur as well as a tree. And meanwhile. Uh, let's look at what's the off lane here for the bears. It will be the aggressive tri lane. No, come with me is rotate to bottom. So just dual lanes as well for them in the end. Zizu is invis up in mid. I don't actually think that they saw the uh, saw the rune get taken either. So he could potentially be in a lot of he's rut row, rut row sing sing. This is not good. Caesar sitting in position here. There's no living armor either. <laughs> And he's going to take an early sleight of fists, and he'll de deliver some right clicks, no stout shield start. And we'll have a quick pause. So, well the dual lanes from Cloud9 I feel are, are pretty smart actually, because if, yes. if, they, if they just go straight defensive tri lane, then Viper crushes Centaur mid. Puck probably breaks even or, or wins his lane against the Ember, depending on just individual performance, and the tri lane should do quite well. So they win at least two, potentially three lanes that way. Mm -hmm. But with this dodge, Darkseer, not gonna have the best time against this dual lane, and mid lane Sing Sing should get his farm up, and they can even get some levels for this tree potentially bottom. Yeah, he might die very early though. Come with me in very good position to follow up if Sing Sing goes for uh, Havos bottom lane. They'll eat a leech seed now. Bone Seven coming in with the stomp. I don't think they get the well. Maybe they do get the kill. Just the right clicks, the boots of speed on the tree. Last hit going to Bone Seven. Wow. Great start. And here. Sing Sing dodges the gank in mid. So did he? I guess. He, they, they just didn't have the damage to kill him. No, he didn't, he didn't push up far enough. Okay. He got stunned and then he ran back in the tower. Yeah, so he took Sleight of Fist to level 1, but generally you're not going to use that to dodge an Invis Venge stun, so... Just not enough follow-up. Visage not even bothering to skill an ability now. He's taking Soul Assumption, but look at this manly tree just chasing after Come With Me, giving him the club. What a hero. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid lane, Dendi, getting flashy and going aggressive on Sing Sing. He Sing Sing doesn't have any, uh, he doesn't have any regen left. With the two pool tango build. He does have a bottle coming out now, but has to be careful. If he gets caught by an orb, then he can go for a kill here. Mm hmm Arise. Messing around with Pylite Eye on top. Oh, taking a bit of chip damage. The Rubik does have a lift available, though. Not gonna go in just yet. Actually popping the Ion Shell. And I'm eh, just gonna tank it up. They, they do lack for damage in this dual lane for Cloud9. As soon as they hit level 6 on the Doom, that's an easy kill if Arise is here. But before then, they may struggle to keep him out of lane and... This is going to hurt Eternal Envy's farm a bit, and they see us seen under Ion Shell and constantly under harassment. Dream Protector does have a regeneration room right next to him on top if Ember bottles this. Uh oh. Well, that's. that's lane salvaged for Sing Sing. Yes, lane salvage indeed. He's already doing. Eh, he's doing okay in terms of CS. There is a Soul Ring up on Arise, but he's probably going to die right here. I'll try and surge out. Is there a lift available? He can't. What? Just barely gets a range. Tosses him back down. Did not throw him back, though. Pile I die. Is, is Arise going to make it out? As soon as he stops the surge, we'll get right-click. Just kidding! <laughs> Tree's here, too. The Close big bad the tree. Meanwhile, bottom. Bone 7. Going ham. Looking for the stun. He gets it off on Come With Me. Double-edge follow-up is available. Will he commit to this kill? Yes, he will. And this offlane centaur is doing... He already has triangle boost from the first blood, though. That's what set everything off. Did centaur get hit in 6.81? I haven't had a chance to, like, study mm, the patch I don't yet. He did? Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, so the mana cost is a bit higher on the stun at all levels. Hmm. That's reasonable. Yeah. He's just been such a beast for like a wide variety of teams as well. Your Western teams, DK's been using him to great effect. Mm, some of the other Chinese teams, not so much, but it's just been one of the strongest offlaners of this version. Well, Fuzzy Bear is not having the best early game. They need to get some kills with their aggressive supports, though. Visage and Venge, I don't believe either of them have boots yet, and they're still hovering around the level 2 mark. Man, all that early pressure on Sing Sing has just destroyed him in lane now. Dendi has 10 denies, and the Ember's sitting on 3 last hits. Sure, Ember's a decent comeback hero, but he is getting nothing out of this laning stage. This is really problematic. Normally, Ember does a lot better than this in the 1v1, but with all that early pressure, he just hasn't been able to get a CS up. Denied. Nope, he has not. Well, Roaming Bone 7, heading towards mid. And this is going to be a tough kill on Dendi with a phase shift available. Yeah, it doesn't know which way to go, and... I'll just fall, fall back to the orb in the end. But on 7, on a bit of a jaunt. Doesn't really... I guess with the early Triangle Boots, laying against the Viper is not quite as difficult. Not when you have first blood. Like that. 
Then he tosses down the orb, but another rune secured. AUI 2000, really the linchpin for uh, for Cloud9 in this early game. He secured at least two runes, gets the the first blood on the bottom lane, and he's really been around the world. Yeah, he's just been really just single-handedly winning the early game for Cloud9. First getting the first blood on mid, and then securing the kill on top lane, and then just allowing Centaur to have just an... Oh my goodness, look at that DD. <laughs> Poor Dendi. Uh, I just, just got his HP at almost done. And he now he's like coming in. 60%. He might be able to go for this kill here with the Leech Seed. Dendi, no orb available for one second. He tries to face ship. Does make it. No, goes down. It's too strong. Leech Seed. I think, did that auto attack? Like no, It was the Leech Seed. Okay, it's the Leech Seed. Yeah, he's been everywhere, man. He did catch Dendi when he had like two seconds left on his orb. So I feel like he's been studying some PPD replays because this is very reminiscent of how PPD plays the tree. He has really arcane activated. boots. He has one CS. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. And then we'll die to Roshan to make his time a little bit more efficient. So Fuzzy Bear is still killless. Four minutes in. It's five minutes in. I can't count. Yeah, I would be. A, I wouldn't feel too comfortable from Cloud Nine here, though. Sure, their laning stage is probably their weakest point, but at the same time, Havosta's farming well. He's caught up nicely in this bottom lane. Dendi's having a ball mid, and also Sing Sing's been shut down quite hard. His CS has improved a bit, but still sitting only at 13 CS. And that's true. Their team fight is pretty darn good, but at the same time, their levels on the supports are just really lacking. Both Venge and Vist are still. Only at level 3. Havos getting caught out bottom. The stomp will be there. Double edge follow up. Not available. He actually turns around and tries to run. Now Havos 7 gets trapped behind the trees. AUI is going to go in on Havos. Don't think he'll get this kill alone. One more right click. Can he bring down a rise? He's slowed down by the poison. Tries to escape. Go and visit under the tree line. But won't wow. make it out in the end. I think that Aoi was kind of in Centaur's way. So he couldn't actually double edge. He was... His pathing got real funky there. So yeah. I wasn't sure if he, they just decided it was a bad idea. Or like you said, the... Maybe got in each other's way. There are also some creeps just being annoying in the background. Well, that's a bears. pretty big turnaround. It is indeed. And this, like, this centaur is, was just snowballing out of control, but the death there gives a lot of experience. Yeah, he was like halfway to his blink already. And Havosta's actually ahead of him in levels now. Eternal Envy has rotated the jungle, so again, Cloud9 playing super efficiently. Rubik taking over lane already level four and a half. And he's found the pack leader Czar as well. This is what. You know, I feel like there's so, sometimes you have those games where it takes like 20 minutes to get an Alpha Wolf, but he's gotten it right away. And this will also help out that Ember Spirit. Having a bad start. Here comes the triple remnant. Sing Sing going hard. Has the phase boots. Nice silence from Dendi. Down he dropping the coil, but Sing Sing actually will be absolutely fine. No. That was a whiff. How did, it looked like he was in range there. He just barely whiffed it. Yeah, he, I thought, I was like, oh, did he Slide of Fist dodge it? But he would know. Slide of Fist was on cooldown. And he got double flasked. <laughs> oh no. I do like that play from Ember though. A lot of Embers, like, there's different ways to use the spirits, but just throwing out three all of a sudden is a ton of burst damage that some nice players aren't prepared for. Mm -hmm. And he has Stream Protector Living Armor to back him up in case he does go in a little deep. You want the offlane Arise having a pretty good time. And now with the, the headdress up, the buckler recipe working towards the mech. And Navi are really just gonna. Or not Navi, uh. The, f the Fuzzy Bears are really just going to be gearing up for their mid-game team fight. Havost will maybe look towards a pipe here, even just going straight into the Aghanim Scepter. They'll have the Blink Dagger, but they're not there yet. They stun Bone 7 right as he pops the ultimate, and Havost continues to be in heavy pursuit. Brains him down with the ultimate. Does drop pretty low. Man, look at that Leech Seed. Nice casual cloak from Havost there. He needs it, too. Yeah, he needs it. They don't need a mech on him because Dark Souls is already going for one. I think he's going pipe, actually. Pipe's all right. It's... I mean, it doesn't block too much. I guess it blocks a lot of Centaur Burst, it blocks, like, Leech Seed damage, maybe some, like, Flame Guard, but I doubt they'll get the full 400 Magic Absorb. Honestly, it's maybe more the Centaur than anything. He's the big Magic dealer on this team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for for the Bears here, it's just all about getting their core teamfight items up. The Mech, the Blink, on the Puck, and then they'll just want to start getting aggressive, whereas for Cloud9, they can look to stack Ancients, just play a little bit more defensively. Stolen Surge, top lane from Pilot Die. Does manage to pull her eyes back in. So close to getting Envy doomed right there. Envy almost had the doom, but wow. couldn't get it off. So close. Yeah, and Cloud9 are going to have their mech soon as well. Envy's actually a bit ahead of your Darkseer here. So Rise will have to back off, head towards the jungle perhaps, and Envy will be able to farm the mech up very quickly. Looks like how he's slowed down a lot since his early roaming about looking at his items and his farm. He is almost level 5, but he had Arcane Boots quite some time ago. 
And looks like a lot of stacking going on on the side of Fuzzy Bears, too. Got to get that mech. Yeah, they've got the Dark Seer as the main hero to clear it out. Unfortunately, they had some Mud Golems here along the way, but... AUI will go in Viz. Unfortunately, he's done it under a Radiant Observer Ward with the Nature's Guys. Will they have any sentries? No, no detection yet for the Fuzzy Bears. He'll go in Viz again and keeps on prowling through the woods. Not yet level 6, but considering his activity, just kind of going for a jaunt. Just checking out the stack situation. Now I'll head towards mid onto Horizon. This will be a great time to kill the Dark Seer. He's very close to his level 6. Or not to his level 6, to his mech rather, but doesn't have it yet. Uh, if they had Overgrowth, this would be a pretty easy kill. Yep. He has leeching a ton of experience though. And Owie has Nature's Guys to cast for days. Oh, he might get a rise. If a rise tanks this camp. Oh, uh, they're smoked up. Oh, what a timey window to kill the Darkseer off. And the Doom's available as well. They surge in envy. They get the Doom. All of it set up by a roaming AUI 2000. Really nice execution there. Dendy's also coming about him for the road. He'll get thrown up. Back towards the rest of the team. The Doom right clicks come out. There's no Doom available. Drops the coil. Orbing through wants to kill a pilot die and make an escape. But pilot die's pretty tanky. And Sing Sing comes in. Don't, the illusion will get the kill, but not before Dendy goes down. So in the end, a two for one and two cores falling, including Puck, who's getting close to a blink, and Darkseer getting close to a mech. Very good timing for Cloud9 to find these open. The supports of Cloud9 have just been doing a much better job of securing the runes for Sing Sing than. Fuzzy Bears have been doing for Denny. Denny's like forced to go check him alone, and even if he does see it, he can't actually get any of them uncontested. First, it was Owie checking him out. They had three, actually four heroes down there on the bottom one. Yeah, the hood comes out for the Viper now, and the way they're itemizing is not really taking them towards late game. So, Fuzzy Bears already not the best late game heroes, although they're all decent. They don't really have a true hard carry or tons of physical damage, but. What they do have is this big mid-game team fight. So for them, it seems the key is just stop dying, get your core items up, and then oh. and then go take fights. But this isn't going to help. Come with me. Caught up by the fresh blink dagger on Bone 7. There is an overgrowth here. Gets off the familiar stuns from come with me, but not enough anyway. Still goes down. Too much chain stun. They'll actually cancel this TP that was coming in for the Venge. How is Dendi's puck come or Dendi's puck's blink dagger it's coming along and just 400 gold? Sing Sing's actually recovered quite well. He's 101. He hasn't died, and his CS is pretty respectable at this point in the game. 12 minutes in, there's just been no towers for anyone yet. Still all outer towers standing. In fact, dire towers all completely healthy, and radiant towers doing pretty well as well. So nobody's been able to transition from these kills into something more. Not uh, the the bears maybe a. Bit better position to do it, building a mech and a pipe, but don't have those items. But they have tree armor. That's true. On Cloud9. Oh, Dendi is going to orb away. Now, Jontian taking a lot of pressure from Sing Sing. Despite that great early start, the death and the follow up has held him down a bit. Now, finds Dendi with the searing chains, the sleight of fist combo. Sing Sing's anticipated it, gets the kill. And the coil was even deployed for that as well. I think he missed that again, too. He did it while he was. Uh... Even if he hits that, though, he's not getting that kill. Oh, yeah. Maybe he can escape, though. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Would have been tough. A lot of other heroes coming in. Sleight of Fist is there. Searing Chain follow-up comes through. And Sing Sing's just been finding kills all of a sudden. Come with me will be the next one down. AUI 2000 goes in Viz. Does take the Viper ult, but there's no follow-up available for this. Sentry Ward's here, but he'll make it out safely. Does walk back into the Sentry, now juking through the trees. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, it's a two-pronged attack. Bone 7 comes in. Dun Dun Hun loads with the stun. Her bow's starting to drop pretty quickly. The Familiar's doing decent damage. And another side of Fizz. Another Searing Chains from Sing Sing. They get the double kill for Havos, but Sing Sing's on a killing spree. Everybody dies in the end, or at least most of the core heroes. Finally, finally Dendi secured his blink on the back of that fight. Yeah, they didn't have enough mana for the Darkseer mech, too. That was so close to saving his life. Pilot Eye going for a kill on a rise. That has no mana. Well, so the, the right click's going to be enough? No. Dyer's structures are fortified. Going for the solo plays. There you go. Well, in the end... Ben, it's been a back-and-forth game, but it's an even game in terms of gold, in terms of experience. And both teams have their mech now. There's the blink out on both of the initiators, the puck and the centaur. So well, expect, expect some big and potentially deciding fights to come up very soon. Yeah, I think the pressure is on bears, though, since Dyer has Ember Spirit and they have Doom. I think those skill a lot better than Puck and Viper. Um, so bears has to take the fight to see Naya. They can't passively farm up. They have a very, very high... Highly aggressive lineup, and they have the Blink Dagger now. Now's the, the time to get killed. And in some ways, the biggest window for Bears, not to say that they have no chance now, but their best opportunity was in the laning stage, when they were looking to just win two, one solo lane for sure in the Viper vs. Centaur, win their tri-lane, and at least break even mid, but 
Cloud9 just kind of anticipated and dodged that with their clever lady. They'll find a UI top. The blink silence is there. They'll get the kill on the tree. That means no living armor for this top ta tier one tower. And he was just going there to, pl uh, to place observer rewards too. Pretty wow. unfortunate for him. It's a good hero to kill as well. I'm probably their best hero to slow down these pushes and they'll lose a tier one. But normally, what Cloud9 does in these situations is they just go for trade. So they'll push in mid, they'll push in bottom, and you know, if, if you were in Viz there, they didn't actually have any detection for him too. So come with me and Zizu. Not having the most detection versus a tree. Oh, that would've been a lot they're of fight mid. They're gonna look to take a fight here. They brought in the darks here. Dendy's come through as well. The mech's online. Havosta's gonna be tanky, and Cloud9 do not want to get caught out. Well, they'll back off. And Havosta's actually TP bottom. So they might look to punish this. They smoke up under their tower, the tier 1 mid, and... They do head straight towards the bottom lane, not spotted out by the Radiant side. No observer ward on the hill mid. Oh, they know that they're here. They're pinging out on them. But they are pinging. Oh, good anticipation, perhaps, but is it good enough? Dendi, almost getting caught up, throws out the orb. Can he get off the silence? He heads to the right, but they doom him. They lift him up. The familiar stun keeps him alive. The mech's there as well. They back in. They drop a wall. Big AoE combo, but they needed the puck to get his off as well. Couldn't do it. Is there a buyback on Dendi? Not available. Now they're on the run. Blink stun from Bone7. He'll connect on two. Follow up with the double edge. Securing kill after kill while Sing Sing ping pongs back and forth through the fight. Now they work on Zizo with no puck here. They just don't have it. Havos will come in, but he's too late to this fight. Familiars will have to get him out safe. He'll try and slow down Bone7. Can't do it alone. Sleight of Fist combo cooling down in just a second. Unloads the Searing Chains. There's a buyback from the Darks here, but do they even get Havos out in time? He's already fallen. It's an ultra kill for Sing Sing. Now a Rise could go down as well if he's not careful. He'll TP in. Fails on the Vac and will be forced back. Losing the puck there without buyback cost them any chance of taking that fight. I'm not exactly sure why he jaunted back in into this I, way yeah i think if he just ran back to the top left to the mid tower he would have been a little bit safer i don't think his blink was uh up i think it was disabled by something but it was close yeah and that was just a timely lift by pilot eye one of the better supports to have against the puck just because of that instant disable you just lift him then eternal enemy can target you for the doom and they even they did a good job of trying to protect any at that point as well they had the vacuum the wall the mech but Imagine if they had a coil. Imagine if Havos was there as well. That would have been a very different fight. But it wasn't. Cloud9 caught them off guard. Yeah. Or if he had ma managed to get a waiting rift coil before he died, or before he got doomed. So close. And now Sing Sing Perseverance comes online. Not the leader in net worth. That does go the way of the Viper, but this is not going to last for long. If they don't start getting kills, he'll work towards probably an Aghanim Scepter, potentially a BKB. But kind of a hodgepodge of items here from Havos. Just a lot of tank items. Problem is, even with these items, they can still kill him. They have enough damage. It like almost doesn't matter how tanky he gets. What yeah. Nice deal here. It's they're gonna be that Viper ultimate. That's just one of those small annoying things about playing as Viper against Rubik is you can't prevent him from stealing your ult. There's just no way. Well, you could get Lincoln's, I guess, but <laughs> that's pushing it. They'll smoke up. Going on searing chains mid on Havos. Now the wraparound comes. Cloud9, lurking on the high ground, ready with this blink initiation, they could stampede into a doom as well. The slight of Fist of Osa, and that's Q for Envy to come in. Popping the Centaur, now they doom, but a great defensive swap is there. The back comes from the backside, the coil's there as well! Cloud9 thwarted in their aggression, Havos gonna turn this around, they do deploy an overgrowth. Spirits here, Spirits there, Spirits freaking everywhere, but they haven't done the damage yet. Havos stands strong, kills off the Tram Protector, now another jump in from Sing Sing. Bone 7 connects with a stomp, they kill off Dendi, three heroes dead. A triple kill for Sing Sing. And I thought, you know, you, you look at the landing stage, you're like, well, we've shut down the Ember, guys. Not. 10, 1, and 4. And Visage died twice that fight. They have so much setup for, like, all their spells. If he gets two people in Searing Chains, it's a meat of hoofs on double edge, people die. Overgrowth on two heroes, everyone gets Slight of Visage, and they just die too. There's so much damage coming out Radiant's from Cloud9, and it's just much attack. easier to execute than Bears. Bears has to get a couple people in dream coil and then they have to vacuum and then they have to wall and then after that they don't really have any follow-up either and those are all big big ultimates whereas like blink stomp from centaur searing chain slide of fist from ember spirit those come out like every 10 15 seconds and do a similar amount of damage in these fights as well mm -hmm. that's the other thing is sure they're low cooldown but they're not markedly worse spells for this stage of the game not at all in fact you i mean you could argue they're a lot better because you can spam them the Darks here, while also, I will say, is not... I guess it's nice for Doom, you can get some of these... Well, mainly just the Vlads and the uh, the Alpha Wafaro, but it's kind of... The Darks here pick does feel a bit underwhelming this game. There's no great carry to counter, like a, a Luna, some other illusion-based hero, and... Overall, the he's hit good walls, they just haven't felt like they're doing much. 
There's an Ember Spirit initiation. It's Saint Saint leaps in, goes forward, catches out Hufflepuff. It's now the Overgrowth and Cloud9 just start going to work with the Wombo combo. The wall's thrown out, but they're still pretty healthy here. Saint Saint just keeps on going, pushing forward, and Envy's diving now as well. He gets off the triple kill, cleans up the Viper on the backside, and now looks for Come With Me. Slight of Fist combo available, connects on two. Sing Sing just showing off. Ultra kill beyond godlike and not done yet. He's got the mana charges bottling up. He's going to get the rampage. Sing Sing Dota. GG. GG. What a performance from this man. Ban Ember. <laughs> That's, that's the problem with this r right now. Like, if you have first pick, I think there's five heroes that are considerably stronger than any other one. And if you get that hero, you're just very, very, very likely to win. I mean, it goes back to what we were discussing a lot at Star Ladder, though, which is maybe you just go for a trade instead of... You go for a trade, yes. Because they ban out two of the heroes, you leave one extra in the pool, and you ensure you get something, whether it's a bat, whether it's an invoker. Maybe you even consider banning out Trudy, because Aoi is just completely wrecked Fuzzy Bear's early game. And that's supposed to be their strength, looking at their lineup. Well... I, I gave Luminous a little shit when he said if Cloud not Starlight are not a premier land because they didn't have Cloud Nine, but I gotta say, yeah, sure they got some stand-ins, but they look very just their teamwork was really impressive that game. Great movement from AUI. They just knew what to do as a squad, and I think going back to the laning stage, the key move was dodging the try on try lane. Went for the dual lanes, went for the roaming tree, and that's really what opened the game up for them. He completely shut Viper down at level one. Which was just devastating. For and we just got done casting earlier today. Viper versus Centaur 1v1. You you take that po point in return and the lane's over. Because he just starts leveling up Corrosive Skin. And every time that he hits you, you take Corrosive Skin damage. So. Yeah, Havos actually went for Max Nether Talks in that game yeah. too. Maybe he wasn't watching. But, well, it's a game of supports, this game too. Vengeon... Yeah. Uh, Venge and Visage didn't really do anything. They weren't able to get a kill on Sneezing, and after that, they were kind of just always reacting to Cloud9, but Cloud9 almost always got a kill before Venge and Visage even showed up. So they need to set up their teamwork a little bit. I don't think the draft was suspect at all. Yeah, their draft definitely could have worked. I mean, we saw yeah. the potential there if you get the fast blink. And, uh, also, the, you also, the other thing that happened was those two key kills when the items were getting close. Like, they almost had their mech on Darkseer, then gets scattered out by AOI, gets doomed, and the mech's delayed. And they also got Dendi there, where maybe he could have lived, but Blink Dagger and mech were delayed, and Havos got slowed down. So all three of these cores, you you want them to just have a good start and just come online as a death ball, like 15, 20 minutes. It did not happen. I would like to see, I think, a Timber from them instead of a Darkseer. They had so many strength heroes and melee heroes, too. Timber That's so another just, great counter to this mass melee strat. Just, just would have wrecked them, but... Didn't happen. It didn't happen. It was still close. Yeah, well, with that being said, guys, it's game one of a best of three. Meanwhile, on our secondary stream, twitch.tv slash beyond the summit two, Alliance is duking it out with Fnatic. These are your winner bracket round one matches in a double elimination format. So with that being said, will the Bears make a run of it? Will it be a clean 2-0 sweep? We'll find out after a short commercial break. Stay tuned. You're watching DreamHack Bucharest.